And this thing, in my opinion, is absolutely tournament ready. And I didn't spend a fortune. All right, guys, my name is Braden with Bass Feed. If you guys are just tuning in for the boat review, then uh, you guys may not know my channel and feel free to poke around. Uh, I fish Northern Lakes, Pacific Northwest to be specific. And uh, so I'm targeting Northern strain, largemouth, and uh, lots of smallmouth fishing. So, so if you guys are interested, check out some other videos I got and I'll be going through sharing as much information as I can specific to this type of fishing. And I will also be um, progressing through the, the different tournaments in the area. I've already got some tournament wins this year and I look to uh, fish uh, some regional stuff pretty soon. So um, if you're interested at all in all that, please tune in, subscribe and see, see how it goes. Otherwise, if you're just doing a quick stop for the boat review, that's fine as well. So let's get started with the boat review. I'll go through um, everything that came stock on the boat, the pros and cons, and then I'll probably end up adding um, a video of just what I've done to improve this boat. Now I just wanted this thing competition ready, but I didn't want to spend a fortune. So I think I found a happy medium ground there and I'm happy to share that with you as well. And this thing in my opinion is absolutely tournament ready and I didn't spend a fortune. So, so this is a 2022 Pro Team 195 TXW. I'll go over, I got the 150 XS on the back and I'll go over specifically what I got as far as factory installs, my pros and cons on everything. And trust me, for a one year review, you will not have anyone that has put this many hours onto the first year on a brand new tracker than me. So I definitely know the pros and cons and I'll go over that with you right now. So let's go, I'll start in the back. All right, obviously this is the 150 and for this boat size, I think is, is great. Um, obviously you can't get the 250 on these babies, but uh, 150 is fine. I mean, I, I, I could get up to 55. In any case, 50 miles an hour is great for cruising around and doing uh, tournament, even tournament fishing, that's all right, as long as you're not making huge runs. Real nice size motor for the boat. So in the back here, um, I guess my only complaint would be trailer lights. Now that goes for most trailers, kind of comes with crappy lights. And uh, I've, I've upgraded these lights already and I don't have to worry about that anymore. I, I spent the extra money and got some nice LED lights and, and uh, wired them myself, insulated them, waterproofed them, and they're good to go. As the factory lights on these trailers are crap and water does eventually get in and you will find yourself without tail lights on a long drive and you won't even know it. The other thing that was kind of crappy was the was the straps. Now that was an easy upgrade. I really like just the simple boat buckles. They're very easy to use, nothing fancy. They're not retractable, but I don't even see myself ever wanting to change. It's an easy thing. It takes me just a couple minutes to load up my boat. No complaints at all. Uh, another complaint, it doesn't come with the swim ladder. So I'm sure you're aware of that, but uh, I had to get an aftermarket. No big deal. I mean, but I think every boat should come with a swim ladder at least for emergency. All right, starting in the back. So I went with the vinyl. Now, I don't actually recommend it. Cleanup is great, easy. I just lightly pressure wash it. I could do it a couple times a year and it only takes me a few minutes. Now that is the number one perk of vinyl flooring. Cons, it gets hot. If you like fishing barefoot in the summer and you're in a, in a hot area, do not get the vinyl. It's just not worth it. You're just gonna have to do a little extra cleaning to keep that carpet clean. It is what it is. There's no way around it. Because by afternoon, I can't even walk on my deck and, and neither can uh, my buddies. So it's, I'm sort of on the fence with it. If you don't fish barefoot anyway, and you uh, want an easy cleanup, go with the vinyl. So starting in the back, um, they did a nice job here considering that you know the it's not the same setup as other boats but they have a, a good size tank considering it's just a little tight to be working on things they do have this compartment so you can reach in there 
But yeah, nothing really to talk about here. Everything seems just fine. Okay, overall latches and hinges are great. I would say specifically the way these compartments line up, you can just see that sometimes they're not exactly even in some areas. Not a big deal, but if you're a perfectionist, it might bother you a little bit. Now, I know these boats are, you know, significantly less than, you know, some of the high-end boats. So you're going to get some of this and that's going to be your call if it's a uh, deal breaker or not. So uh, the dry boxes are great. Um, they actually work pretty darn well. I don't even get much moisture in these back ones. And I live in Washington state. We get a lot of moisture. Okay. So those aren't bad. They're not sealed, but they're not bad. Live well is fine. Basically it's the bare minimum to take care of business as far as tournament fishing. Um, you do have to run them a lot. I did have a problem with my recirculation and that is covered by warranty. There was a short in the wiring. I'm not sure if that's a factory issue. It was covered by warranty and they're gonna fix it for free. It's not a big deal. Aside from that, live well is functional. It's It's got plenty of space. I've had quite a few fish in here for tournaments and no problem. Now you do have to run, you know, just like any other boat, you gotta run it fairly often. Now I do have a a pretty big complaint on these lids there are no latches this is not a latch you literally just pull this and it pops open the problem with this is if you drive without a cover and i mean on the highway these will fly open so don't keep anything in your live well that can blow away um, i've added these little magnetic strips but because i have vinyl it didn't stick very well and uh so that was my little plan to tackle that issue it did not work honestly i just don't worry about it when they fly open i don't keep things in there that can fly away but that is absolutely a design flaw worth noting aside from that live wells are fine so moving forward uh this center has a pad for a third seat and uh this is where the onboard charger is installed and easy access fire extinguisher is in there and this is my go-to baits uh, that I use off and I just keep them handy in here and I keep my units in here when I'm not using them the seats are great now this is a one-year review with a bunch of hours okay seats are very comfortable and a big upgrade for my last boat um, I really like them however if you look closely you can see those seams are coming apart now this is partially my fault every time i land a big fish i kneel on this seat right here i'm over 200 pounds and i kneel on this seat over and over and over i literally put all my weight on my knee putting a lot of stress on those stitches so the stitching in my opinion should hold up better than this fortunately i have a very good warranty and it will be covered and i'll get a new seat here you might not want to kneel down over and over and over like i do because obviously this is nothing you want to see on a newer boat um everything else up front is good i like the steering wheel the steering on this baby is nice it drives nice i would recommend a jack plate but just a little side note so the console okay it looks nice it's dirty at the moment but it's nice it's glossy looks futuristic looks fast and that's all fun I don't really care about that stuff as much as most. What I care about and what ended up being more of a con is the fact that I cannot do an in-dash head unit for uh, a fish finder up here. So that is a design flaw in my opinion. I think all boats should have space fit right there in the dash. Personal opinion. It's not going to change much. They do have this set up made to have a unit right here this is a tournament edition boat this should be tournament ready and in my opinion it should have an in-dash spot for a fish finder now setting that aside everything else is fine smaller issue here you get what you pay for situation the gauges sometimes get a little moisture i think it's only one or two of them gets a little moisture in there uh, i live in a very moist state so 
I guess it shouldn't be a surprise. Little issue, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who experiences a little bit of problems with the gauges. Now I'm in a, a very wet area of a very wet state. I'm sure that plays a part. And if this is the worst the issue can be, that's not too bad. Because if you live in another state down south or, or Midwest or anywhere else, um, you're probably not gonna deal with this, this much moisture and therefore you won't even have a problem. All right, moving on. Another funny thing about this boat is if you watch any other reviews, you see that this thing has plenty of cup holders. In, in fact, it was overkill and I wasn't very happy with how many cup holders were in here initially. But as I, keep using the boat and I literally now use the cup holders for throwing baits in like anyone else and I have a purpose for each cup holder in terms of baits so not really a complaint but yes truthfully it's a little bit of overkill uh, let's talk about the cooler this is another con if you live in a hot state this isn't gonna be good enough for you I think this foam is the only foam located in this cooler and it's only a quarter inch thick just under the lid that is not good enough even on my hot days up here in washington state which is not as hot as a lot of places my ice only survives until about noon okay so that's not impressive for a brand new boat and in fact i expect them to get this fixed within a year or two so double check if you're looking for a brand new tracker just double check this if they haven't made any improvements that might be a factor in your decision so just be aware uh, space is decent location is nice lid is fine it needs to have more foam it should have foam behind this uh, sheet metal down here uh, sorry for the mess i use this as a garbage can more than a cooler but that sheet metal should have some foam behind it uh, ice should last throughout the day so i can make two bags happen but one bag that ain't surviving all day on a hot day so there's another con now let's move on to storage uh great storage i only need this bin for all of my tackle some guys i know there's some serious tackle junkies out there this isn't going to be good enough you're either going to use those back bins or the big front bin here which i'll get to uh for me i think i'm probably moderate in terms of tackle uh, usage and this is enough space for all of my tackle so i'm happy with the amount of tackle storage all right Let's do the next spot here. Now, I'm not gonna clean out these bins to show you how big they are, but this particular bin is big. Now, it looks full, but I have a lot of fun stuff. I keep my kids' stuff in here, um, multiple life jackets, throwables, fenders, nets, um, tournament bags, rain gear. I mean, lots, of, I even have bins in there with other things in them uh, for emergencies, that sort of thing. That all fits in there with ease. Now it looks full because I kind of stack it up right here for easy access, but I have more space even back under. So storage in my opinion is not a problem. Now they do have seals on these, but I live in Washington state. I get moisture regardless of the ceiling. It's unavoidable because I've never owned a boat that didn't get moisture in this state. All right, and the seats that come on this thing, you have two seats that come on this boat. They are very comfortable, very nice. One in the back, one in the front, and they are very comfortable. Now the pedestals are a little short. You may have to upgrade that, but that's a non-issue in my opinion. Now it doesn't come with the this uh, pedestal style seat in the front. I had to upgrade to it. Um, I recommend that if you're a, ser a serious angler. So let's move forward. Now rod storage, I'm very impressed with because I came from a boat that doesn't have a decent rod locker. So you can see what style rod locker this is. And these rod lockers hold, I think 12 rods. That's a lot of rod storage for me, especially considering I keep some rods on the deck. So that is more than enough. Fantastic. All right, there's another rod locker on this side. I'm actually good just using one side the other side for random storage and then just keeping a handful of rods on the deck i know this year they changed what type of trolling motor comes on these boats 
I forget the name of the trolling motor that comes on the on the 2023s, but frankly, if you're getting a new boat, plan to get a new trolling motor. It should be a given. I wish it wasn't. When I'm talking, I'm talking trackers here. I wish it wasn't the case, but they're making a budget boat for the most part. So just plan on getting a new unit on the front. I went with Garmin, uh, but any of the upper end Minn Kotas will probably do great on this size boat. I don't recommend keeping the stock option. It's, it's not worth it. You want a spot lock, you want the power. This is a bigger boat. The fish finders and the trolling motor need to be upgraded. So have that in your budget. When you're doing the math for what you can accomplish for how much money keep that in mind when you pick out a tracker you have to calculate some money whether it's right away or a little later to go towards better fish finders and a better trolling motor that's just my opinion but it's a strong opinion so moving on the only thing left is the trailer now the trailers are sweet i'm a huge fan of these trailers my last trailer was so so but this trailer much better i went with the single axle and no complaints yet i don't i didn't put a lot of weight into this boat in fact i reduced the weight by getting lithium batteries and a few other things so for this weight this trailer has been doing fine i've been traveling across the state no issues at all it's got the foldable tongue uh it's got the spare tire holder um winch is decent one thing uh, i've noted though is this winch slid i don't know if it was installed improperly but that wasn't going to work where it was and actually it slid back over time because of uh winching the boat silly design just double check that it it lines up like this one right here now everything else is great the brakes on this thing awesome the cables the, the whole hookup system it's great no complaints the jack is great uh yeah really no complaints in fact i will praise this trailer i can get into lakes and rivers with the worst boat launches uh, when i say worst super shallow not a problem all i got to do is get the water up to this wheel well right here that boat is coming off or coming on and it's not very deep so it's a very well designed trailer and if i'm not quite lined up when i'm pulling the tracker on it just lines me right up and scoots right up on that trailer like nothing now that's a big difference from my last trailer so yeah no complaints on the trailer design at all the only thing i could possibly complain about is not a spot to do your retractable uh straps um but that's not a big deal i, I don't mind these manual buckles at all and just fine i have no need to upgrade that anyhow so there you go guys there is your tracker review so thanks for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for other reviews. I'm going to do a review on the Garmin Force, um, the Echo Map series on the, the fish finders. And I've gone through those thoroughly so I can tell you um, a lot about those. And, and I'll do a few other in-depth reviews like this. And I'm not going to spare any details. And I, God knows I got enough hours on these lakes to where um, if there were problems, I would find them. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, yeah. So subscribe if you like the review, and uh, you'll have some other good stuff coming at you. And then if you if you want to follow my uh, my uh, tournaments and uh, see how I do, I think this is the only the beginning. It's only going to get better from here. My first year doing tournaments, I'm I'm kicking ass. I think I'm getting angler of the year. Uh, my first year doing competitive fishing, which is which is huge. So I imagine it won't take long for me to uh, progress from there. So fun stuff. I uh, can't wait to bring you guys along and appreciate you guys tuning in. All right. See ya.